If cruise embarkation day stresses you out just a little bit, you are not alone. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips, tricks, and new travel hacks that'll help you start your cruise with ease. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now these days it does take a little bit of planning to make sure that your cruise starts off with a stress-free cruise embarkation day. Now in this video, I'm really gonna focus on the steps, the things that you could do sort of a little bit in advance to make sure that you set up your cruise embarkation day so that you start your cruise with ease. Now I really want this video to be useful, so I will be sharing some practical and some specific information along with a few new travel tips and hacks that both new cruisers and seasoned cruisers could use. Now before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, book the earliest boarding time or arrival time that is available when you do your online check-in. Now there are different schools of thought on this. Some people say arrive later, so book a boarding time that is later. The benefit of booking it early is if there is a delay of any sort, you would rather be one of the first ones on the ship than one of the last ones that is waiting perhaps for hours in the cruise terminal, which did actually happen on a cruise that we were on. We were supposed to board around 11. We boarded around 1.30, was not the end of the world, but the people that had appointment times for one o'clock boarded a lot closer to three or four o'clock, and that meant hours waiting in the terminal, not that patiently. So it definitely will not start your cruise off with ease if you do that. So try to book that early appointment times so that you get on, you can have some food or some drink, and then you can relax. Number two, print out your boarding documents and any other documents that you will need for your cruise. Now, something that I like to do is actually print out my boarding documents and my luggage tags, even my shore excursions, just as I do them, I print that out and I put it in my file. This way, nothing is left to the last minute. I think that's a good way to prepare, but as well, you'll wanna print out, if applicable, uh, your proof of vaccine, any test results, anything that you might need for your cruise or even for your flight, make sure that you do this in advance. But one thing that we had noticed is when you do get to the cruise terminal and when you're doing your check-in at the terminal desk, it just goes much faster if you don't have to look through your phone and you have those printed documents. Now, a little tip, still keep a backup of an electronic copy even in your screenshots of your phone or in a file, but having those printed documents is just going to help you to start your embarkation off with ease. Number three, build in some buffer time when booking your flights. So you definitely wanna make sure that you fly in at least one day before your cruise. But nowadays, I would say you may even wanna consider flying in two days before your cruise. We have seen more recently, whether it's domestic flights or international flights, that there have been some delays, uh, some cancellations, even sometimes some lost luggage, just generally a little bit of chaos. Now we do expect that eventually things will get back to normal, but if you really want to not stress before your cruise and start your vacation off right with relaxation, then if you can fly in two days before your cruise, you're definitely not going to regret it. And I can tell you based on comments that I see in my Facebook group, as well as the comments that I see below my videos, that I know that the number one thing that stresses people out the most and that they would change if they could is flying in on the same day as their cruise. Number four, consider booking the cruise line's priority embarkation program. So some cruise lines like Carnival that has Faster to the Fun and Royal Caribbean that has the key have these priority boarding programs where you can pay a fee of course, but then you can board before other cruise passengers on your sailing. And of course, there is definitely an advantage to that, but there are other benefits as well. And I have to say in the past, I didn't really see the value in this. However, now I think it is becoming a little bit more apparent. And at the same time, I've read the feedback from passengers who have used this, and a lot of people have found tremendous value in this. Now, I do have a little tip. If you are a Royal Caribbean cruise passenger, do take a look at the cruise planner in advance before your cruise, like several weeks in advance, and you may find that this goes on sale to as much as 40% off. Number five, arrange your hotel, your transportation, and even your parking in advance. Now, as people are cruising more and cruises are getting more booked up, it is getting harder to find a good hotel nearby the cruise port. And even booking your shuttle to the cruise port should be done in advance. Now, as you know, I always fly or drive at least one day before my cruise and I book a hotel near the cruise port. So this way I start my cruise off without any worry at all. Now I'm often asked for recommendations for hotels, for transportation, 
and even for parking. So if you are going to be going on a cruise out of Port Canaveral, which is near Orlando, Florida, I'm happy to share this information with you. Now, even if you're planning a cruise from Port Canaveral in the future, like I am, this is good information to know. Now, this portion of the video is sponsored by GoPort. GoPort is a one-stop shop for Port Canaveral cruisers, and they offer a wide range of options depending on your needs. Pre-cruise hotels, which I love, parking and transportation packages are all available. Now, GoPort has four main packages. They have the Fly Snooze Cruise, which includes your hotel stay, your transportation from the airport to your hotel, your transportation from the hotel to the Port Canaveral Cruise Terminal, and your transportation at disembarkation from the cruise terminal to your airport at the end of the cruise. The Snooze Park and Cruise Package. Now, this is great if you are driving to the cruise terminal, but do wanna make sure that you have a hotel stay the night before the cruise. No matter where you're driving from, there are a variety of hotels to unwind on your way, as well as close by to the Port Canaveral Cruise Port. Now, the Snooze Park and Cruise Package not only includes your hotel stay, but parking at a lot that is only five minutes away from the cruise terminal, as well as transfers from the parking lot from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on embarkation day and transfers on disembarkation day back to the parking lot. Transportation. Do you need transportation from the airport to the Port Canaveral embarkation port? Forget the taxis, forget the Ubers, and instead book air-conditioned, comfortable transportation with GoPort. Now it's actually about 45 minutes from Orlando Airport to Port Canaveral Cruise Terminal, so you definitely don't wanna leave this to chance. And as well, it's actually a much more affordable option than booking transfers with the cruise line. And parking. GoPort's paved, lighted, and gated parking lot is only five minutes away from the Port Canaveral Cruise Terminal. You can save money by parking offsite, and it really is so easy. And I did do a little bit of the math to compare, and it's definitely a more affordable option than parking directly at the cruise terminal. Now, I'm going to leave all the information about GoPort linked down below in the description of this video. Make sure that you do check out the link to see what packages are the best option for you. Number six, bring air tags. Now, this is a pretty new travel hack or travel tip, and you'll want to place an air tag in each of your pieces of luggage. Now, it's great to have when you're flying, but even when you are actually boarding your cruise ship, this is great because sometimes your luggage can be put down the hall, which has happened to me before, and this kind of avoids you having to go look for your luggage. You will know exactly where it is. And as well, when you are disembarking from your cruise, make sure that you do put your air tag into your piece of luggage before putting out your luggage on the last night of your cruise for disembarkation. It'll make it so much easier to find your luggage when you do get into that cruise terminal at the end of your cruise. Number seven, have a good breakfast before you head out to the cruise port on embarkation day. Now this tip was actually shared by quite a few experienced cruisers and it was a great tip because when you arrive at the cruise terminal and you're already feeling a little bit hungry, if there is any delay, you definitely are not going to feel very patient. This way, if you've had a good breakfast, you arrive at the cruise terminal and you can handle whatever comes your way with a little smile and grace. Number eight, prepare your carry-on bag with the essentials that you're going to need for the first day of your cruise. You don't wanna wait until you have your luggage to be able to enjoy some of the nice things around the cruise ship. So make sure to pack, of course, your documents and your passport. Just make sure that those are on you and not in your checked luggage. But in terms of packing your carry-on bag, you'll probably want to have a bathing suit and and your sunscreen if you do plan on using any of the pools when you board your cruise and of course your valuables so that could be your jewelry your medication you may want to bring some makeup or some personal items like deodorant to be able to freshen up and a little extra tip make sure to bring a change of clothes now what some passengers do is they actually bring a change of clothes that they could wear even to the evening in the dining room on the first night of the cruise the first night of your cruise is almost always going to be casual so you can wear something casual but you do want to freshen up probably and not wear the same thing that you've worn to board your cruise number nine watch your safety video and check in at your muster station immediately upon embarking on your cruise ship now this is mandatory for all cruise ship passengers on embarkation day before sail away so you might as well get this over with so you could really enjoy your embarkation day now i have a little bit of a tip sometimes Times on the cruise line app you can actually view your safety video before you even board your cruise so we've actually watched it in our cruise terminal before boarding the cruise ship and this way it was something to do in those few minutes before boarding or in some cases you can even watch it the day before the cruise from your hotel before getting on to the cruise ship Otherwise, you can actually watch that video from your cruise ship cabin as well. But make sure that you do check in at that muster station so that you can actually just enjoy your embarkation day after that. 
Number 10, upgrade or pre-purchase any packages before your cruise. So basically don't make the mistake that I did on my recent cruise. So of course you wanna pre-purchase any dining packages, beverage packages before you cruise. This will actually save you money as well as time. But something that we don't talk about that often is upgrade your packages before you get on your cruise. I made the mistake of upgrading once I got on my cruise. The beverage package wasn't so difficult to upgrade. I was able to upgrade at the martini bar. I, however, I probably did pay a little bit more, but in particular, my mistake was I waited to upgrade my Wi-Fi. Now, I thought I would wait until I got on my cruise ship to see what the Wi-Fi was like, but unfortunately then what happened was I ended up not being able to log in properly at nighttime on the first night of my cruise and the whole morning I had to wait, line up to be able to upgrade my Wi-Fi package and I really just should have done it before my cruise. Thanks so much to GoPort for sponsoring this video. Now I'm gonna leave the link to GoPort, the packages and the information in the description below this video. Now I'd love to know from you, what are the tips that you can share that help to make your embarkation day stress-free? Please let me know below in the comments of this video. Now I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.